I'm not ashamed to admit it. It's hell in there. It's horror. You have to be a certain type of person to survive. Hi guys, what's up? It's Tahira. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, hello. Don't forget to click the subscribe button down below and join the fam. I make a lot of fun videos. In today's video, we are getting up close and personal. I am doing a get ready with me. It's been a hot minute since I did one of these, but y'all know these are like some of my favorite videos to film. It feels just super homey. Like this is FaceTime, like we chilling. The topic today are boys. Well, men. You can tell by the title. Today we're just going to be talking about dating and dating apps and the dating courting world and navigating that as a black plus size hijabi Muslim woman and also me being a public figure whatever that means i will not be held responsible for whatever philadelphia does in regards to traffic and the lighting so bis me law this is gonna do what it do baby please pray for me tiktok has me in the chokehold originally i wanted this video to just be me sitting down doing my makeup and just chit chatting which it is but i was like let me post something on my instagram story if you don't follow me on Instagram, I sincerely to hear you, you're literally missing out. I update there every day. I'm like, let me ask my audience if they have any specific questions or topics or advice that they want regarding dating. And a lot of my audience are also plus size and curvy women, black women, women of color, Muslims. So y'all kind of blew it up. I'm excited to just chill and talk with you guys and play around with makeup. I am experimenting with a lot of makeup stuff, not just the products that I'm using, but also the techniques. I already did my brows. They're actually a little light. I don't know if you could tell, but I really like soap brows and super thick fluffy brows. So I'm trying to transition myself into that. They might look different the next video. Just, just let it rock. I'm also trying out some products from Merit. They sent me this little bag full of goodies and I was like, you know what, this is the perfect video to try it out. And the last new thing that we're doing today is I'm trying to do my makeup like a UK body. I'm telling you, I don't know what is across the pond, but the makeup skills are really slapping. And I just want a crunk. Can I get a little bit of the tally? The beauty, like, come on. So yeah, we're just going to be experimenting. I'm so excited. Get comfortable, grab a snack grab a matcha, a coffee, do your makeup with me, and let's talk about dating. Okay, so first up, I'm going to be color correcting. If y'all follow me on Instagram, you know that I am in love with Live Tinted. They are a woman of color, specifically a Daisy Women owned beauty brand. Their most popular products are their Hue Sticks, which are also color correctors, blushes, eyeshadows, lip products. They really just do everything. So I use the shade Balance to color correct. So first, let's just talk about my expectations going into the dating apps. If y'all didn't know, I was in a committed relationship for most of my teenage years. We were together from when I was like 16 or 17 to 20, 21 ish on and off for like six years, a very, very, very long time. It's been a little over a year since that relationship has ended. And I'm just now feeling like I've done the work to be out there in the dating scene. I know that I'm over the situation. I've learned from it. I've moved past it. I know what went wrong. I know what I want differently this time around, specifically wanting marriage and wanting a relationship that is going to be pleasing to Allah. So I figured since I am also an introvert, getting on the apps is probably going to be my best shot. I am also somebody who does not have an easy time trusting people specifically men is that because of daddy issues possibly mind your business <laughs> i'm like you know what let's give the dating apps a shot i'm in a new city i am a bit more into myself as a woman and just knowing what i want and what i don't want and what i liked about the apps was that there is no commitment until you're ready to commit if you black, you know the phrase, you are single until you're married. And I definitely feel like the apps is where I can just talk to somebody, get to know somebody and, and do it at my own pace, not necessarily feeling pressured because, oh, we're on a date. Oh, he's paying for this or, oh, he's at my parents' house. You know what I'm saying? Like, sir, if I don't like you, you, you go know. I'm also gonna go on top with the Milk Hydro Grip Primer and Refresh Spray. I love the Milk Primer, but I ran out. So they sent me over the spray. 
And apparently this is the best setting spray on the market. But some of my fears going into the dating space, specifically being online, was the fact that I do have an online presence. So maintaining my privacy and autonomy was of the utmost importance for me. I do not have my Instagram on any of these dating apps. And I was intentional about that. I'm also somebody that has unfortunately dealt with a lot of clout. Oh my gosh, wait. I was about to jump back into my regular makeup routine. We don't do this anymore. One of the products that they sent me is their complexion stick. And this can be a contour foundation or a concealer, I guess, depending on what shade you get. So I'm just trying to see like, is this my color? No, that's definitely giving concealer. Okay. It's a bit too close to my skin tone for my liking, but I'm gonna start with this one and then if I wanna go lighter, I'll just build it up. But yeah, I've dealt with clout chasing and it's not fun. And I feel like specifically, we've seen how men clout chase when they get with women that are influencers and how all of a sudden you have your own YouTube channel and all of a sudden you're doing this and you're doing that. I don't like it. Mm -mm. I've worked entirely too hard for my platform and I will not let a man come in and destroy that. I also wanted a guy to get to know me without the overarching title of influencer um, personality. A lot of people make assumptions about influencers and I feel this even in my regular day-to-day -day life, whether it be meeting new people at like a coffee shop or even talking to family members, it's just like, you do what? Or they think that I'm one of those influencers who are y'all know who i'm talking about i'm not trying to talk bad about people but y'all know what type of influencers i'm talking about and if you are on my channel you know that i am none of the above i am very intentional there's so much depth to me and my audience knows that somebody on the outside looking in may not be able to grab that just by looking at my instagram page even though i would hope they can't like that's literally <laughs> that's literally the point so the two apps that i ended up downloading after <laughs> literally weeks of my friends, my mom, um, Nadira harassing me to get on the apps and just put myself out there. I downloaded both Salams and Hinge. Salams is a Muslim dating app and Hinge isn't a Muslim dating app, but I wanted to do both of them because I wanted to see what the experience was like on an app that was dedicated solely to Muslim people and helping them get married. And how did the Muslim people show up in the non-muslim space even though i live in philly which is literally like black muslim mecca i am still around a lot of non-muslims so what's more realistic for me is not to be surrounded by muslims and trying to find a partner but being surrounded by non-muslims so i really wanted to just see what that experience was going to be like and let me tell you it was <laughs> definitely an experience the number one thing that i realized is that muslim men are practicing a different religion I don't know who they be saying they worship. I don't know who they be praying to. I don't know what books or hadith that they are looking at, but yeah, y'all not talking about my God. <laughs> Now I'm talking about my prophet. It would be so crazy because I would be on Salams, living my life, seeing certain Muslim men, and I would recognize their profiles because maybe I thought they were cute or maybe I spent a bit more time reading through it or maybe we even matched. And then I get on Hinge. Homeboy went from being a sheikh, an alim, um, a khari to his literal profile picture on Hinge is him in a club with his hand on somebody's ass. The math, babes. One plus one is equaling 35. And I was very confused. To be honest, I feel like the mix of both the Merit one and the Juvia's Place one gave me the right amount of coverage without it being too, too, too bright. So shout out to them. But Hinge has a high success rate just in general. A lot of black women specifically that I know via social media or some of them even in life have had a lot of success on Hinge compared to other non-Muslim dating apps like Tinder. Like y'all know people go on Tinder just to fornicate. So that really wasn't where I was trying to be. Another thing that UK girlies do is that they put their foundation in the places that you contour, or at least the tutorial that I saw, that's what they did. I'm gonna use this brush by Merit to just buff everything out. I can say though, objectively, I liked Hinge as an app more. On Hinge, you can match with someone, you can like their pictures, and you can leave a comment. Compared to Salams, which you literally can just message someone which i feel like a lot of people don't do or you can just match with them which definitely is a lot more pressure i love that on salams it obviously talks about spirituality so it asks you what are the spiritual acts that you do that are most important to you how often do you pray what type of practicing are you looking for how soon are you looking to get married 
Are you looking to get married? Do you have children? Do you smoke, drink? All of that. So Salam's was definitely the place where I was like, okay, do you match with my non-negotiables? And then Hinge, I feel like you saw more personality from people. I feel like Hinge also had better prompts. Salam's was just a little bit corny, but I definitely feel like there was use in both apps. I would say that I was on the apps for maybe a month. If that, I say was as in past tense because as of today, well, as of like three weeks ago, I deleted both the apps. And there's a few reasons for that. Number one, I knew going into the apps that I am not society's conventional standards of beauty. I'm not saying I'm ugly because if there's one thing Allah did, it was that. <laughs> it was, mashallah, tabarak Allah, really went off. But what I'm saying is society does not deem somebody that looks like me, somebody that A, is modest, so they can't sexualize me to a certain extent. But B is also plus size, so I'm hypersexualized. And C, I'm black. Even though in certain communities, whether that be my Muslim community, my black Muslim community, in the black community, I am seen as like attractive. Being on the dating apps is very different. On both apps, you can say what are your non-negotiables. And I was pretty open racially. There was really only one race of people that I was not open to. And y'all, if you know me, Y'all know who I'm talking about. I would prefer to be with somebody black and I had that preference, I think on both apps. I could be wrong, but I think that salams, you might have to pay to set your preference. And even in regards to age, I was looking between the ages of, I think 25 and maybe 30, 30 was pushing it. I feel like maybe 27, 28 would be best for me. If you know me, I'm very mature, even though I'm only 22. That's another thing, y'all. Me putting on the apps that I was 22, I definitely feel like made certain people be like, mm, like she's young, like she doesn't know she wants and the alternative is putting my job on there i definitely feel like people were scrolling past my profile and was like she's an influencer she's a model like no me gusta that was just really frustrating for me even though i don't have proof of that i feel like in my spirit that's what was going on but i did have a few matches a few conversations with people on both salams and on hinge one of the things that really annoyed me about being on salams is that muslim men love doing the whole nickname thing and y'all cannot convince me that's not internalized islamophobia do you know how many men that i talked to and their names were just like initials or it was like two letters or it was nicknames that just did not fit and then you talk to them you be like what's your name and it's something so simple like there was one guy he literally only had the initial ad on his profile and i was like ad is this like maybe you're an abdur or abdul something what is his name so that's one of the first things i asked him and also he had that he was american as his ethnicity when he clearly was not a white man and i just feel like those are red flags in 2021 you're claiming america and you're muslim and a person of color i'm sorry babe we matched and i'm talking to him and one of the first things i asked him is is ad short for something and he's like yeah guess so i'm like all right, is this flooding? Whatever. I was like, if I knew what your ethnicity was, it'd be easy for me to guess because y'all know that certain people from certain countries and cultures, they name their kids certain things. So I'm like, okay, well, if you give me a hint, then maybe I could, you know, make something shake. He's like, well, I'm American. That wasn't a joke, like you was that ass. Yo, this lighting is so weird, y'all. Please just rock with me. I'm like, okay, so since you're just American, the two letters I see are AD, let's go with Adam. Adam is a name that you will find in American culture and also in Muslim culture and other people. Do you know that I said that as a joke? And he was like, damn, how'd you guess? <coughs> the bar is in Jahannam, I promise you. Another guy, his name was Red flag. Your name is not Al. No woman that is Muslim named you Al, I promise you. Of course, we start talking and he tells me actually, oh, my name is Ali. Why did you put your name as Al when your name is three letters? Same thing with AD. Why say your name is AD when your name is Adam? That's not a nickname. Ain't no need for it to be a nick when your name is for, come on. So now on Hinge, one of the things that I also liked about Hinge is that they gave you like spotlight guys that they felt like you would really, really, really vibe with. And then they would be like, here's this one person y'all, I think y'all should meet. Now Hinge always tried to play me. The person they wanted me to meet was never anybody that had any of the qualifications I was looking for. They were just also Muslim. But that highlight category was always cute. 
and you could just have like a rose and you get one rose a week to send out to a guy something that happens a lot specifically with black men which is so annoying they will put as their religion or religious preferences christian spiritual jewish muslim all of that so you a hotel red flag so that was something that was really frustrating it took me like two weeks to realize that i could put religion as a deal breaker on hinge yeah make sure you turn that on i'm telling y'all don't waste your time talking to men that aren't muslim i know some people they use talking to non-muslim men as like practice but i feel like it's a slippery slope so while my face is like baking or whatever i am going to take my beauty creations pack of like neon pastel eyeliners people always ask me tahira what do you use for your graphic liner beauty creation so the reason that i am off the apps is mainly because i felt myself feeling very insecure and it was just too much emphasis on the things that are yes a part of me but are not me if that makes sense and i did have stuff about my personality that i like reading books that i'm like i'm a huge nerd and sometimes men wanted to talk about that but if you are in the nerdy space you know men literally just come to women that are also nerds to tell them that they don't know what the hell they're talking about so that was very frustrating there were times where i would be on the apps and it would be like yeah we have no matches for you and that can be very very depressing i'm not gonna lie like all the men in the world that are using this app and none and so then i started asking myself like am i asking for too much is there something wrong with what i want and none of these things are real i just want to emphasize none of this is the truth none of this is valid i know that i am beautiful i know that i am worthy i know that my partner is out there i know that i'm asking for things that i want need and desire and i try to be very intentional about everything rationally i know this but i can't help that when i'll be sitting on the apps i'm just like yeah of course y'all can't find nobody of course i'm not saying that there's only five men left in the world to be self-deprecating I'm telling the truth. <laughs> Do y'all know how many times I would talk to Nadira or one of my other friends about a guy and they would be like, yeah, I matched with him. Yeah, we talked last week. Okay. Red flag. And I'm not somebody to talk to somebody that my friends have spoken to, but it was also because they've spoken to him and he's boring or he's annoying and come to find out that's exactly who he is. The last reason I decided to leave the apps, I solely believe that in regards to dating, courting, whatever, especially because I'm Muslim, men, should be trying to talk to me especially because my intentions are to take it off the app get to know you introduce you to my family you know what i mean so you sitting there being like yeah i'm chilling what are you chilling for we talking about marriage like <coughs> on hinge the person who matched back which is usually was a guy had the option to invite the other person to start the chat which i feel like you're a punk you matched with me you already saw that i liked you and you sitting here telling me yeah you start the conversation are you dumb like i don't like that i'm telling you i'm so sorry i don't like it at all i have to be very mindful about talking with men because i'm not super experienced especially going after men that are a bit older than me which is something i was very apprehensive about this is uncharted territory for me and i don't think i have it all figured out i also want to mention that everybody in my family is pretty much aware of the fact that i'm looking for people i would literally send my mom pictures of guys and tell her about these interactions so ain't no shady behavior going on over here so one of my last interactions on the app before i deleted both of them was that this guy adi i asked him what attracted you to my profile whatever and he literally said to me not gonna lie it was your lips but your face is beautiful too. Red flag. It's not necessarily a problem that he found me attractive. Also not a problem that he said I had nice lips. Mashallah, my lips are very nice, I'm aware. However, given that we just started talking, I just found out your name, Al, and you sitting here already having sexual connotations, talking about my lips as what attracted you to my profile, and then to say, oh, your face is pretty too. Thanks, I just feel like, men nowadays don't know how to have conversations and specifically muslim men that are coming from spaces where they have already been intimate with non-muslim women have already had full-blown relationships sometimes even kids with non-muslim women they then come into spaces with muslim women and don't know how to do this the proper way they don't know how to have a conversation that's not rooted in sex or physical attraction or something like that that's not what you say you could have said you had a nice smile because my smile is 
mashallah popping you know what i'm saying i look a little ashy but bear with me i'm going to take my contour stick which is also by juvia's place and i'm going to contour with my bake still on nothing too crazy but i'm gonna brush it on a brush instead of applying it directly which is what i usually do so yeah i was just like you know what i don't want to be perceived i don't want men looking at me i don't want them to have any thoughts or opinions about me and even the fact that men are just sitting there swiping 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 like just looking at my profile i don't know i don't like it i was feeling very uncomfortable and that plus feeling insecure plus i really wanted to reset my attentions specifically with the new year coming up so i deleted the apps and i told myself i am not getting back on the apps until one of two things happens a the new year comes or b i finished reading this book attached by amir levine i've also just been very intentional about learning about love and relationships trying to figure out what i want intentionality is really the theme of my life right now and the few of the books that I have been reading that help with this is I was reading Secrets of Divine Love by A. Halwa, and that really grounded me in the fact that love comes from Allah. Allah is love. And there's no existence of love without Allah in it. Then I just finished like two days ago, All About Love by Bell Hooks, which was really transformative in allowing me to define what love is for myself. So many of us have heard, especially if you're Muslim, oh, like love comes after marriage and love is not necessary to being married and y'all young people are sued whatever no i'm so sorry love is it like love is the thing that binds all of us together love is truly a part of every relationship and everything that i do why would my marriage be existing without that and so i had to redefine what love is for me and that also made me feel very empowered highly recommend this book and the last book in this series that i'm reading is attached by amir levine she talks about the three i think or four different attachment styles that people may have and how this may hinder your relationships how you can be mindful of these type of attachments coming into fruition and just learning how to navigate it and also go about getting whatever you need in your relationship to make you feel satisfied based off of this attachment style but yeah that's just my experience on the apps but let's get into the questions that y'all have for me next up is i take this like flat brush and my fenty beauty bronzer this is in coco naughty so question number one is which dating app have you had the best experience with can i say none i definitely prefer hinge like solely as an app but Salams, I guess, just makes the most sense. How do you filter out those who aren't self-aware? I guess reading the profile. I know people say, oh, men don't know how to talk. Men don't, they don't, they don't have a lot of deep thoughts. And y'all may be onto something, but I want someone who is intentional. And you can tell that from a profile, but I don't think there's anything wrong with taking a risk and messaging somebody. You can tell very early on in a message with a guy where his mind is. An easy way to filter them out if you've matched with somebody and you're trying to have a conversation, one of the first things I ask, if not the first question, how long have you been on this app and what are you looking for? And sure, men can lie, but some of them don't even have the brain or the finesse to lie. They'll literally just be like, I'm chilling. You know how many times I've been on Salams and you see somebody and it literally says, I'm not looking to get married. Red flag. Ask. And if he lies, you can tell by what he does and his actions and really listening to what he has to say. What to do when they talk to you first week and ghost you second week. Girl. Unmatch and keep it pushing. Sometimes men will match with you and then not reach out to you. And then you're just like, okay, so we chatting, we talking, what's tea? I feel like confusion speaks volumes. Like men that know what they want are clear. You being confused is a bad sign. Unless you go out and seek clarity and they reassure you. But remembering that you are the prize is very important because unfortunately it is, I feel like a man's market right now because there are literally only three eligible black muslim men left on the planet and there are so many amazing beautiful spiritual successful independent beautiful badass muslim women in the world they have will never have the same amount of like stakes in the game you know women we can be assaulted we can be murdered we can be harassed we can get pregnant even in a muslim sense going from your father's house or your family you can be somewhere overseas you can be you know hundreds of thousands of miles away so knowing that you are the prize is very 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 important and not letting a man feel like oh yeah like i got her no you don't take advantage of the fact that on the apps you can talk to multiple people it's not realistic in real life for muslims to talk to uh, muslim women to talk to multiple people unfortunately even though i feel like that would get rid of a lot of problems so why you on the apps girl don't sit for and wait for nobody to talk back to you go ahead and keep swiping plus mm -hmm. has hijabi here for some reason men always think you're a whore because you're black and pretty and plus size 
she's not wrong. <laughs> like the hypersexualization of plus size women plus the hyper fetishization of hijabis is a really sickening combo for men being like, yeah, I could kind of see that thing through that abaya. Get away from me. <laughs> like I'm calling the police. It's very frustrating. But at the end of the day, um, men are the biggest whores. So you ain't gonna shame me about something I did or didn't do. Cause what was you doing? Why do I feel like black women are always the last choice for any men? It's statistically proven that black women and Asian men specifically, like South Asian men, Indian men, Desi men are the least desirable in, in the dating world. Those stats were taken from dating apps. <laughs> we are truly the last choice for a lot of people. And I'm talking about commitment and relationship and love and romance. I'm not talking about sexualization or being desired. Cause what the hell is desirability? And you thinking I'm cute and you think that, you know, you like how my body look, but you not willing to invest into me. You're not willing to put a ring on my finger. You're not willing to meet my father. What is that? What's that doing for me? So Merit sent me this flush blush, which is actually a really cute name. And it looks like this. It's like a berry color. And it actually kind of goes with the purple that I have on my eye. I really like these berry tones for the fall time. They just make me feel super festive. <laughs> what would you consider a red flag if you saw it on a guy's profile? A lot of men will literally not have anything on their profile. Like they will not put anything about themselves they won't answer any questions or they'll literally be like, message me if you want to know more. Red flag. The point of the questions are for you to answer them so that I don't have to waste my time seeing if we get matched to find out stuff about you. Like it's all a ploy and a tactic and I don't like that. I like people that are straightforward. Even the men that be like, I want a girl who don't wear makeup, who wears niqab, who's okay with me having four wives. I kind of respect it because at least you know what you're going into versus the men that be playing games. Him not having up to date pictures of himself. Red flag. Men will literally have pictures of them with no hair, with hair from their high school graduation, from prom, from their sister's wedding. They'll have pictures with other women. And it's like, bro, who are you? Arguably men have worse dating profiles because they feel so entitled to women and they haven't been socialized to express their feelings. Also the type of pictures that he has, men, specifically Muslim men are literally hoes. They'll take the parts of their body that they feel are not out of, and I emphasis on what they feel and they will sexualize themselves. Every picture is you in the gym. Red flag. Also men that don't have hobbies, like going to the gym is not a hobby like men not having what their job is even if they don't tell you where they work like you do not have to say that you work at st john's hospital but you not having anything for an a job is a problem also pay attention to when i ask do you smoke do you drink x y and z how often do you pray very important men will literally snitch on themselves nowadays they have so much ego and so much pride they don't even lie there's no need they'll tell you they ain't shit Ooh, look at that Ooh. Mm -hmm. When in a conversation do you know that things are not going to go anywhere? By the way, you're amazing. Thank you, boo. Like I said, I can tell very early on just because I'm somebody that talks a lot. So a man not being able to keep up with me in conversation, him not asking me questions, not trying to get to know me. He can't reference anything on my dating profile. Like all you saw the, was the fact that I am curvy or that I have nice lips. Yeah, nah. Red flag. Specifically, I know that a lot of women we are socialized to talk a lot and being able to sit back and listen to a man and seeing if he can give back what you give to him is very important so my natural instinct is to ask a question and then i can keep a conversation going on my own like i have so many things that i would want to ask if i'm just getting to know a stranger a lot of men they won't ask anything that's a red flag i've noticed men will often say oh let me have your number and people are different right but for me numbers are so personal girl you think i don't watch catfish you can find out so much about somebody from their phone number but that's just me i know some women they like to cut straight to talking on the phone because they feel like men can say whatever they want in through text and i had to literally tell a guy you can't keep up with me right now you think you're gonna keep up with me on the phone nah Cut it out. Okay, so I just put on my current favorite hijab. This is the shade Truffle Mushroom from Vela Scarves. Oh my gosh, I love this color so much. It's like a beautiful, cool toned gray moment. And I feel like it works so well with like blues and purples that I have going on, especially with like the color of the room. I have been loving doing black liner and brown liner and then like some type of gloss. Merit sent me two of their shade slick tinted lip oils i love lip oils especially for the winter i have a dry face my lips get dry i get dry patches it's not cute so i feel like the lip oil is just that extra amount of moisture that you need these are the two that they sent me this one is in taupe this is what it looks like it literally just looks like a taupe and then this one is in bel-air i'm 
kind of feeling Bel Air. Y'all, it's really like getting dark outside for absolutely no reason. I've only been filming for not even two hours. Since I'm done with my makeup, let's actually move to the couch where I can give y'all some better lighting and we don't have to act like there's any more sun because it's gone. Okay, we're on the couch. Now you can really see how my makeup looks. Look how bright my under eye is. It's still very jarring for me to like look at. I definitely look awake, you know? It's, is it giving you like I'm from the ends? You know what I'm saying? Is it giving buff tin? How do you keep convos going with guys and how can you tell if someone is interested? I think there's nothing wrong with asking a guy, hey, are you interested in me? Like, do you like me? Like, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It can feel very awkward, but to be honest, like there's a whole lot of fish in this. Well, not a whole lot, a whole lot of, but a lot gonna provide. In regards to keeping a conversation going, take away the sense of the sensation, the, se oh my God, sensationalizing of these men. And remember that you're talking to a person. So you would talk about your day. You talk about your interests. Um, you talk about family. You talk about Islam, you talk about hobbies, you talk about what you ate. If you do struggle with carrying a conversation, something that we have to our benefit that I feel like the other, the older generations did not have is all of those card games. So there's, we're not really strangers. There's the vibe check from the digital sisterhood. The and and the skin deep have conversations on YouTube with couples. And I think they both have card games. So if you're having trouble trying to figure out what to say to a guy, literally whip out one of them cards. You can tell him that y'all playing a card game or you can just ask the questions as if that came like straight off the dome. <laughs> and also with the apps, what I like is that there's an, there's an assumption that you're interested in me. I don't have to really sit here and think too hard about if you like me because we matched. And so if you stop talking to me, that's a sign. Or if the conversation is going dry, then that's also a sign. If you find that they kind of seem annoyed when you message them, they take entirely too long to answer back. They're giving you one word responses. They are kind of rushing you in conversations. They can't remember what I talked about before. Red flag. These are all signs that somebody is not interested. With being Muslim, the more straight up that somebody is or that you are, the better for the situation. Is is wanting to be desired slash pursued by the opposite gender wrong? No, I did have to get used to the fact that now that I am looking for a husband, I'm looking for a man to find me attractive. It's a very weird feeling after being a hijabi my whole life and being like, don't look at me, don't look at me, don't look at me, I don't want to be perceived. And me also being an introvert, I don't want anybody to look at me. Even Islamically, it's important for you to be with someone that you find attractive because sex is a part of marriage. Sex is also an act of worship in Islam, there's no shame in sex. So it's very important for you to want to be desired <laughs> and pursued by somebody. And too many people are not having those type of conversations with potential partners. And they think that it's all gonna work itself out and then they get married. And since you're not satisfied, he's not really attracted to you or you're not really attracted to him. And apparently there's like hadiths of people who, you know, their sex life wasn't fulfilling or they weren't really super attracted to each other as they thought and then they got a divorce, so. What does your ideal date look like? And somebody else said, go to first date ideas. I love something that lasts all day. I like something that's a mix of planning, adventure, and spontaneity. Like we're getting in the car and we're going to a restaurant for like brunch, right? But after that, we end up at the beach. And then after that, we end up at the bookstore or we end up going to see a movie or, you know, we're sitting in the car just talking for hours. Somebody basically said that whoever they were talking to is assuming that they would be on some haram stuff because they're black and not asking to speak to women's fathers. There are too many stories about Muslim women talking to men specifically who are not black. They're usually out of and they are only talking to Muslim women, black Muslim women for a good time. They have no intentions of taking the relationship anywhere else. They usually are pressuring these women into sex and into things that are obviously haram and inappropriate. And sometimes they will force Muslim, black Muslim women into these positions and then just go marry somebody else, usually somebody a part of their culture. And it's sad. And this is why earlier I made the distinction between black women being the least likely to be on to go on dates um and to be in certain types of relationships versus black women being desired people already assume that black muslims don't know anything about islam they act like we're a guest in the faith even though black muslims have literally been there since the dawn of time and some prophets were literally black but we're just going to let it rock it sucks 
Uh, and it's definitely something that I worry about because I am open to men of color. I don't want to be fetishized. I don't want to be with somebody who cultural appropriates. I don't want to be with somebody who thinks that they can say nigga because you can't. Like, there's so much to think about. But then you'd be wanting to be with black men, but like, Black men don't even be liking black women. They have, they have so much trauma, trauma that they need, that they need to they unpack. They don't even know how to speak to black women. Black women. They, they fetishize non-black women. women. They want to be white men. Like there's so much stuff. Or they want multiple wives and they broke. Or they don't want to go out and get a job. Or they're not really practicing. It is a lot. I was reading All About Love by Bell Hooks. And one of the last things she says in the book is basically, do you want a partnership or you want love? There's a lot of people that you can have a partnership and y'all can be happy. I want love. Love is a risk. Love is rare. It's not as common as people may think, in my opinion. So I'm willing to surf through the nonsense and get to my person. And I know that Allah will provide. Allah literally says that he created us in pairs. So I'm just chilling out here. But this is why I feel like you definitely have to have your community involved with you talking to someone. Men prey on women, specifically if you're a convert or a revert or you're black because they feel like you don't have anybody to hold them accountable this is why i even tell my non-muslim friends do not talk to muslim men because i promise you nine times out of ten they're only talking to you because you don't know the rights that you have as a potential wife and they want to take advantage of that <laughs> letting your community know that you're talking to someone asking around about somebody even going into their communities and asking about them like do your research girl whatever stage that you feel is appropriate to introduce your dad or your family members because we don't all have muslim fathers and we all don't have fathers in our lives but whatever stage that is make sure you hold true to it mm. how do you tell someone you're not interested <laughs> it's funny on sincerely sundays which i don't think i've said this in a video but hi every sunday on my youtube channel I go live and we just be talking, hanging out. They're called hashtag Sincerely Sundays. And about once a month, we do Sincerely Cinemas where in our Discord server, which will be linked down below, we watch a movie together. If this is news for you, then you probably don't follow me on Instagram or you're wondering why you've never seen the live show. The lives are never saved to make sure that I am keeping it a safe space and keeping it kind of sacred, you know? I filmed this video because on Sincerely Sundays, I've been talking about my dating profiles, I've shown a few matches. I've had some of y'all come on live and we go through your profiles and your matches and stuff like that together and it's a really fun time. So yeah, tune in to a Sincerely Sundays every once in a while if you can. <laughs> we were talking about this on Sincerely Sundays about how to tell someone that you don't like them or that you're not looking for a friend. You can be gentle and still be forward. Like you don't have to drag it out and you don't have to lie to someone. Like if you didn't have a good time, don't tell him you had a good time. You can say something like if you're on a date you can say thanks for taking me out maybe you can say you don't really feel a connection or you don't think that y'all are compatible it's hard i don't think there's any easy way to say you're not interested but i do think that for yourself it's important to say that Ooh, i love this question how do you set up a profile which is good straightforward intentions because sometimes it's so confusing okay i feel like every profile needs to have a bit of a mystery B, about you and see what you're looking for. D, variety. So on my profile, which if I feel like it, I'll post like a screen recording of it here, but I have pictures of me with makeup, without makeup. I have pictures of me in a more dressy setting and I have pictures of me casually. I mention who I am, what I'm into. For example, I have a picture of me reading a book, which is a hobby. And I mentioned what I'm looking for, that I want someone who is spiritually connected to a law and is intentional. I think using the prompts to your advantage are really helpful. I didn't pay them too much attention when I got on the app, so I'm not gonna lie to you, but they definitely can help. If you give too much of yourself away in a dating profile, people are not going to read it. So knowing how to package yourself in a short little elevator pit pitch that packs a punch is very important. Kind of mentioning what you're looking for or at least hinting at what you're looking for can also help somebody be like, okay, yeah, I think she's cute, but she's looking for somebody that is going to marry her within the next year that prays consistently and has hobbies. I don't have any of those things. Some men will still message you, but at least if you have what you're looking for, you can't say men didn't know. And mystery I think is important because people have to earn access to you. The part of dating and and courting is getting to know someone. Do not put all of that out there in like the first go and even let conversation start off slow and just like ease into it. How do you actively put yourself out there? The dating apps was my way of putting myself out there, but in regards to socially, I think just going out, going to spaces that you know or you feel will have people that you're attracted to that you get along with is very important because most people they say that you find your partner doing the things that you love. So if you're somebody that travels, travel. If you're 
you're somebody that loves education, girls sit in a library and look cute with that computer like, doo -doo 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 -doo. you know? Me, I am a reader. I'm an artsy person. So I definitely will go to a cafe, sit in cute. I go to a bookstore like, <laughs> You know, I'm gonna go to an art gallery, just be like, oh, just casually done up. You know, like nothing major going on here. If you're somebody who you're at the mesh shit a lot, go to the mesh shit, you know, put a little oil on, put a little perfume, make sure that hijab look right, okay? So that's definitely one way you can put yourself out there. To refrain from centering men too much in your life and your choices and your actions, reframe it in your mind as you're just being more social. You're going to do more of the things that you like to do or you're being more extroverted. And if you find somebody, you find somebody. I was reading all about love. Like I literally quote this book every time I talk about relationships. And she mentions that, you know, the future doesn't exist yet and the past is gone. Literally all you have is the present. So even with desiring a partner, being intentional about looking for a spouse, it's gonna happen when a loss is gonna happen. Cause of Allah, my child, you know what I'm saying? So I have to tell myself this, like don't, feel defeated if you go out and you look cute and you're sitting at that cafe and nobody says anything to you. When your intentions is just to be receptive to love versus I'm looking for a man, you never feel disappointed, if that makes sense. Someone tell these dudes to get a genuine profile. Y'all all don't live, travel, and hike, please. Period. It's crazy because being on the apps have also shown me the ways that men have certain beauty standards, standards of desirability, or even personality standards. And it comes out on their profile. All girls don't want men with abs. All girls don't want super tall men. All girls don't want skinny men. So sometimes men are flexing, are fronting, and putting on a persona on these apps that's just not who they are. Bro, like be you, be authentic, be yourself. A person that doesn't know themselves can't ever help me do it. I need to do to be honest dating mm -hmm. as an older she said she's in her 30s is a struggle what's realistic to let go of I'm not the person to ask about what's realistic when it comes to love because I am not a hopeless romantic I am just somebody that really loves love and I believe strongly in love and I think that love is it so I was saying this on Sincerely Sundays. I understand somebody being older, older, and girl 30s is not older, please. If they have kids, if whatever, and they feel like they have to make certain exceptions for things because they feel like they don't have that many options. But for me, I'm very weary of young Muslim women taking on that mentality because you don't realize it, but you're kind of selling yourself short and you're also putting limitations on what Allah can do for you. A lot of people talk about how hard it is to date, which it is. Like I said, y'all see the title of this video. I'm not negating it but something that I even had to tell myself was if the people around me or the men around me in my community are not reflecting the type of man that I want I have to seek it somewhere else whether that's outside of my race outside of my culture outside of my country it's very easy to be like oh my gosh there's nobody here girl you ain't going nowhere I'm girl that's me <laughs> girl you ain't going nowhere you have to definitely write down your needs your wants and your desires also the village auntie has this sheet i don't know if she has it on her website it was very similar to what i just mentioned but it's like okay what are your forever needs what are your needs right now what are your wants in the future whether that want is i want to travel i want to move outside the country for me i don't want to raise children in the u.s this is where the intentionality comes in so that you're not in a situation where you have feelings i'm not going to say love because love is not a bad thing but people make bad decisions based off of other emotions and you're sitting there emotionally attached to someone that does not align with what you're looking for so really breaking down what you need and once you look at what you need and what fits within your life you're less likely to feel like oh i'm asking for too much because you know like not nah, i i literally need this sometimes you'll say like i want this i want that i want this and Allah will send you somebody and you would have never guessed but that's your person. So you can only do the best that you can and Allah will do the rest. Tie your camel, but girl, let Allah handle it. How do you deal with losing interest quickly? I know there are some women who are like, you're not like this, you gotta go. And that's definitely something, girl, you're gonna have to sit down and work through. But the person that is supposed to be you, what do they say in the UK? They say, someone's like, you're a bit of me? Someone that's a bit of you, you don't lose interest. The conversation never stops. If you're losing interest, the men are bored. Oh my gosh, these are all the questions, y'all. This is such a long video but I do it for y'all. And I know that this is a topic that so many people wanted me to talk about. Follow me on TikTok at Sincerely Tahiri with 
too wise. I definitely want to start when I get back on the apps documenting my process of dating and that'll probably be short form just because it's easier than a video like this. Stay tuned for Sincerely Sundays. I would definitely keep y'all updated and I just want y'all to know that wanting to be in love, wanting to be desired, wanting a partner, wanting to build something, seeking companionship is never anything to be ashamed of. There's nothing wrong with that and you are worthy of it. And by Allah's will, you will get it. If not in this life, then in the Akhirah, inshallah. Y'all are beautiful and amazing. And like I said, your worth comes from Allah. You are deserving and worthy simply because you already exist. That is not something that somebody can ever take away from you. You are more than just your body. You are more than just whatever level of modesty that you are. And yes, it's hard, but know that Allah is literally in control. Allah has written certain things for you. This is Qadr of Allah. And maybe in this season of your life, you need to learn to be alone. You need to really reassess what you want so that when Allah brings somebody to you, you can adequately handle it. You can know what you want, what you don't want, what you should get and what you shouldn't get. And so let this be a learning experience. Try to be positive, put yourself out there and just be open to the journey. Don't feel like you're waiting for someone. Live your life and I promise you Allah will drop him out of the sky. I don't know. Maybe next time I talk about love, I have a ring on my finger. Put it on and make him wanna marry me. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like these like chit chat, girl chat, get ready with me type videos, comment down below what other topics you want me to talk about. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. The emoji for today is of course a heart, but it's going to be the pink heart with the sparkles around it. Comment down below if you made it to the end of this video. Y'all better have made it to the end of this video because if I had to sit here and film for three months. Thank you so much for watching. I'm wishing you the best of luck in your love journey and I'll see you in my next one. Deuces. <laughs>